In this final lecture of this decorator section of this complete TypeScript course, let's finish this section by creating one more decorator which we will use for validating the properties of a class. And this will help us understand where and when we can utilize decorator concept in our TypeScript application. So in this lecture, we will create a decorator for validating the input values which we are going to receive for the properties of a class. For example, here, let's go ahead and let's create a class. Let's call it user. And in this user class, I'm going to have a username property, which is going to be of type string. And I'm going to have age property, which is going to be of type number. Now to initialize these properties, I'm going to create a constructor. This constructor is going to take two parameters. Let's say you name of type string and age of type number. And then let's initialize the username and age property. Okay. Now let me go ahead and let me initialize this user class. So for that, let's create a variable. Let's call it u1. And in order to create an instance of this user class, we are going to use the new keyword followed by this user. So this is going to call the constructor of this user class, right? And when we are calling the constructor of the user class, we need to pass the value for username and age. So for the username, let's say John and for the age, let's say 28. All right. So in this way, it is going to create a user whose username will be John and age will be 28. But what I can also do is I can go ahead and I can create a user. Let's say U2. And here, when we are calling the constructor of this user class for this username and age property, I'm going to pass some invalid value. For example, the username is empty string and age is, let's say, minus 30. Now, these two values are invalid values, right? This empty string is not a valid username and minus 30 is not a valid age. But still, I will be able to create a user with these values. And this is what we want to avoid here. So what we want is we want to do some validation of the data which we are going to receive for a property before assigning that data to that property. And for that, we are going to make use of decorators concept. So what we want is we want to create a required decorator. We want to create, let's say, a min length decorator. And this min length, it is going to be a decorator factory function which will take a parameter, let's say length, which is going to be of type number. And from within this function, we are going to receive a decorator function. And here we need to use function keyword. Okay, now we are going to use this required or this min length decorator function on a property. So for example, I'm going to use this required, this username property, because I want to make this username as required field. If the value is not supplied for this username, we want to show some error. So we are going to use these functions, these decorators as a property decorator. And when we use a decorator as a property decorator, the decorator function is going to receive two parameters, the target, let's set its type as any, and the property name, which can be string or symbol. But here I'm simply going to set the type as string. Okay, and this min length, it is going to be our decorator factory function from within this we are going to return a decorator function. So here I'm going to use the anonymous function syntax. And since this is going to be our decorator function, which we are going to use on a property, this function also is going to receive the target and property name. And I will create one more decorator function. I'll call it as positive number. And this also is going to receive same parameters. And we will implement these decorator functions in a bit. Now, what we want is we want to have another function called validate. And we will call this validate function whenever we want to validate the object. For example, here we are creating an object of user class. Let's say I want to validate this user object. I want to check whether the properties of this U1 object has the proper value or not, the valid value or not. So we will validate each property of this u1 object and we will check its value and validate it. So for that, we are going to pass this object to this validate function. 
so for example let me actually go ahead and let me show you that so we have this validate function so we will call this validate function and to that we will pass let's say u1 okay so this function here it is going to receive an object and let's set its type as object so here we can receive an object of any type currently we are passing an object of user type but let's say we also have a product class and there also we have some properties on which we are using the validation decorators so in that case we can also validate an object of that product type using this validate method so this object is going to be of type any okay and let's say this validate function is going to return a boolean value so if everything is fine in that case this validate method will return true but if there is some error this validate method will return false and for now let me simply return true from here okay and here what we will do is we will say we will call this validate method inside an if condition so if validate method here for this object returns true that means everything is fine but if it returns false so here let me check the negative condition so if this validate method returns false on that we are using this not operator it will convert it to true in that case let's say we want to show an alert message to the user saying invalid input okay otherwise we will simply log a message saying that user created successfully okay so we are simply validating the object if that object is valid we are showing this message user created successfully but if that user object is not valid we are showing this message invalid input now in order to implement this validate method first of all we are going to create an interface and to create an interface we use interface keyword followed by a name for the interface i am going to call this interface i validator okay you can call it anything and in here we are going to create a property and for creating that property we are going to use indexed property concept so here we don't know what will be the property name so we will simply call it as prop for now which is going to be of type string now this prop it is going to store the class name whose property we are going to validate for example when we are calling this validate method for this u1 this u1 is of type user so this here this key here it is going to store that user the value here will be user so that will be the property name if we are passing an object of type product here to this validate method that time this expression here it should be product so the property name here should be product and to that we are going to assign an object now in this object also again we are going to use indexed property so here let's say prop key which is going to be of type string so this prop key here it will be the property of that class which we are currently validating for example if the class is user and we are validating the username property in that case this expression here will be username okay and to that we are going to assign an array of string and what this array of string is going to store is it is going to store what are the validators we are using on that property for example on this username property currently we are only using this required validator so in this array we will have required okay but if i also go ahead and if i use min length in that case this array will also have min length so this array is going to store all the validators which we are using on a given property so this is our interface next we are going to create a variable a constant which is going to store the class object which we want to validate so here let's create a variable let's call it validate object and this one is going to be of type i validator okay and here let me make v in upper case and initially we will assign an empty object to it okay all right now let's go ahead and let's implement our validator decorators so for example let's first implement this required decorator so here what we want is on whichever property we have used this required validator we are going to set this prop key of this i validator so 
this one will be the property name and in this array we will insert required okay so for that what we are going to do is here we will say validate object so this is our validate object on that we are going to use indexing and first of all if you see this validate object is of type i validator and i validator is an object where we have a property which will be the class name and to that we are assigning an object and in that object we have the property name on which we are using that validator and it is an array of string so in that we are going to insert this required string so to get the class name we can say target dot constructor so this target dot constructor it is going to return us the class name in this case we are using this required validator inside this user class so the target here is the function constructor of this user class and this target dot constructor in that case will return us that class and we want to get the name of that class so this is the first property basically this the class name to this we are going to assign an object and here we need to use equal to and in that object now we are going to create another property with the property name so here let's simply say prop name because we are going to receive the property name on which we have used this required validator in this prop name parameter and to that let's assign an array and in that array let's set required we are going to do the same thing for min length but there we will insert min length okay all right here it should be colon and let's do the same thing for positive number function as well positive number decorator as well and here we will simply say positive number so using these strings we will identify what validators we have added on a property and for now let's only go with these three validators okay now what we need to do is we need to implement this validate function and we need to implement it in such a way that it will check on the object which we are receiving here it will go through each property of that object and for each property it will check what are the validators we are using on that property and it is going to perform all those validations on that property value and if any one validator fails it should return false but if no validation fails in that case this validate method will return true so let's implement this validate function in our next lecture this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day